This is exactly how you can start Amazon FBA in 2023. So you want to start Amazon FBA, but how do you actually do it? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna be running you through the steps you need to take to start your Amazon FBA business. But before we do get into it, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. We post videos about Amazon FBA every single Thursday. And as always, don't forget to let us know in the comments any other videos you'd like us to make. We do see all of your comments and we try to get back to you all as well. So now, of course, the first thing you are going to need and probably the most important thing you're gonna need is money. It is a business, you are going to have to invest in it. You're gonna to have to buy equipment, you're gonna to have to buy stock. There is nothing you can do about this. It is just part of the game. As long as you work hard, there is no reason why you're not gonna get all of your money back and a lot more, but it is really important to have some skin in the game. It's gonna make you work harder. Before you do start, obviously, you have the funds in place so that you can get started on your journey. So I'm gonna run through some of the main costs you're gonna face when first starting. So the first thing you're gonna need is equipment. So you're gonna need things like printer, you're gonna need packaging equipment, boxes, sellotape, poly bags, anything like that to help you send your products into Amazon's warehouse and secure them. Bubble wrap, special types of labels, there's many things you might need. Now, if you are doing online arbitrage where you're buying products from retail shops or even if you're doing wholesale, then a lot of this you can cut back on because it's already coming in a postage box, it's already secured. You won't need your own because you can just reuse what it came in. And obviously you're gonna to have to print out labels, so you're gonna need a printer. So there's two types of printer you can get. You can just get a standard paper printer or you can get a label printer. We do recommend a label printer because it's a bit easier to use, but a standard printer is absolutely fine. And obviously a lot of people already have access to this. So if you do, that's obviously gonna save you money. So for this equipment cost, we would say between 150 to 200 pounds should be enough to get you started. It could be lower if you've already got some of the stuff or it could be higher depending on your situation. Next up is gonna be your subscription on your Amazon seller account. You ideally will need this. There are two types of Amazon seller accounts. You've got a professional account or you've got an individual account. An individual account is free. You just pay a high amount for every single product you sell. Whereas a professional account, you have to pay 25 pounds a month plus VAT, or if you're in the US, it's about $40 a month. I do recommend to do this. It just means you're gonna get access to the buy box, which of course is very important when it comes to your Amazon FBA. Once you've got that, ideally you are gonna want some sort of software. There are two main types of software you're probably gonna be looking at. You've got your deal analyzing software to help you analyze your FBA deals, and you've got deal finding software. Here at Profitable, we do offer both of these. So we have Profitable, which is our deal analyzer, so our Chrome extension mobile app gives you all the important information to analyze your deals. And we also have our deal finder, which is where we basically scrape all of the largest retailers in the UK and the US and put potential deals in the central portal just to save you time trawling through different websites. Now, the deal finder side isn't as important. I would say this is more optional, whereas the deal analyzer is very important. Analysis of your products is make or break. You need to be ensuring that the products you're buying are good. It's not as simple as just buying cheap products, selling it more for Amazon, you do need to look at the data behind that, which I'll be going into more detail later on in this video. Now for a deal analyzer like Profitool, if you are on a monthly plan, it's gonna cost you about 30 pounds a month or $40 a month. If you are on a yearly plan, it's gonna be about half that price, but obviously the payment is up front. Same with a deal finder, it's about the same, so 30 pounds a month or $40 a month. So your software is gonna be anywhere from about 30 to 60 pound a month, obviously that's if you're paying on a monthly package. The next thing, and of course, the most important is the products. With Amazon FBA, it's not drop shipping, you're actually buying your stock, so you need the money in order to do this. Now, we always recommend for people to start with the arbitrage method. So what arbitrage is, is where you're taking advantage of pricing differences between two retail sites. So if you're in the UK, this might be buying products from the Toy Store Smiths, or if in the US, it might be buying products from Walmart, for example. And the reason we recommend this is just because it's the most accessible for most people. You don't need to be buying thousands of products. You could be buying five to 10 units. So you don't need loads of money. If you're doing things like wholesale, you're gonna be buying in bulk, so you're gonna need more funds. If you're doing private label, the same again, you're gonna need a lot more money. So the nice thing about arbitrage is you can just start on quite a small scale. You can learn the ropes of Amazon FBA, and then as you get more experience, you can ramp it up and introduce new methods of sourcing. Now, how much money do you need to spend in stock? Now, this is a really difficult question to 
answer, which say it's possible to start Amazon FBA with £100 or $100 to spend in stock. Now that isn't easy, but it is possible. Obviously, the more money you have to invest in stock, the easier it's gonna be because you can sell more products, you can then reinvest your profits, but that is the key thing with Amazon FBA. When you are first starting, you don't wanna be taking any money out of your business. You wanna be reinvesting all of your profits back into stock and keep doing the same, probably for a year, maybe even two years. Really important not to see this as a get rich quit scheme because it is not that at all. It is hard and you do need to invest in your business. So to summarize your costs, we've got 150 to 200 pound on your equipment. You've got 30 pound a month on your Amazon seller subscription. You've got 30 to 60 pound a month on your software subscription. And then we would say between 100 and 300 pounds on your product. So that gives us a grand total of 300 up to about 590 pounds. So you know how much money you need and the next thing you're gonna need is an Amazon seller account. But before we get into that, I did wanna just let you know about an exclusive YouTube discount code, which I'll pop up just here for Profitable. It will save you either 5% on yearly plans or 20% on monthly plans. So make sure to take that down if you are looking to start your FBA journey. So setting up your Amazon seller account can seem a bit daunting when first starting, but it doesn't need to be. It does take a little bit of time and they do require quite a lot of information, but as long as you follow the steps, you won't have any problems at all. So the first step you're gonna to have to do is obviously head over to the Amazon seller page. So it will look like this, become an Amazon seller. We're gonna click sign up and we're gonna start adding in some of our business information. So business location, obviously we're in the UK, but if you're in the US, you'd put US or Canada or India. Business type, now we always recommend to put sole proprietor, but this really is down to what you are. Your two most probable options are gonna be sole proprietor or a limited company or an LLC if you are in America. Now the reason we say sole proprietor is just because it's the easiest when first starting out. Now if you're in the UK, in order to do this, you do have to have a UTR number. So that means a unique taxpayer reference. The way you get this is by registering for self-employment. You have to have this. If you want an Amazon account, there is no way around this so it is really important to get this sorted now obviously if you do have a limited company already you can just use that you can skip this step so it is really going to be dependent on your situation next up you're gonna have your business name so you might have a business name already if not go this is what you are going to be going by as a company so my name is Joe I might go as Joe trading it really doesn't matter a huge amount if you're already trading if you're already selling then you know what you're going to call yourself I really wouldn't stress about this too much though we often get emails saying what should I call myself? Don't stress about it too much. It's not going to affect your sales at all. It really can be something quite basic. Now, next up, we've got to enter our personal details. So very simple, your name, the email you want to use and your password for your account. Now, as mentioned, we've got some business information. So first up, you'll see your UTR number, which I just mentioned, your unique taxpayer reference number. So you add that in here. Then you've got your registered business address. So for most people, this is just gonna be your home address. This is where you're gonna be getting all your products sent to and so on. Then you're gonna have to verify your mobile number. So Amazon will just send you a pin and you can verify your mobile number. Now we've got some personal information on the person who owns the account. You need to add your country of citizenship, your country of birth with your date of birth, uh, a proof of identity. So most people use their passport. You'll need to add your passport number um, and your date of expiry and the country of issue. Um, then you're going to have to add your residential address um, and you'll see your mobile number on there as well. Um, once you've done them steps, it's going to take you to the payment information. So this is how you're going to pay for your Amazon seller subscription. So next up, we have the store name. So this is where your customers are going to be buying from. So for me, it's say Joe, whatever, filled by Amazon, if we're doing an Amazon FBA. Again, it really doesn't matter too much. It can be anything, so don't stress about it. But this is just what your customers are going to be seeing. Now next up, you're going to see a few tick boxes. So the first one is, do you have universal product codes, UPCs for all your products? So this is just a barcode basically. So the answer to this is going to be yes. The reason for this is because we're not doing private label. We're not selling our own products. We're selling products which are already branded. We will have the barcodes for these products. Now the next one is, are you the manufacturer or brand owner for any of the products you want to sell on Amazon? I know right here it says yes, 
but you'll put either no or some of them. Most people will put no. This is only if you're selling your own products. So you have your own barcodes, but for most people they are gonna be selling branded products which already have barcodes on them. And then finally, do you own the government registered trademark for the branded products you want to sell on Amazon? And on this one, it's gonna be no, we don't own the trademarks unless you're doing private label. Once you've done that, you're gonna be taken to this page where you're gonna to have to upload some documents for yourself. There's a variety of information like your date of birth, identity documents, this could be a utility phone bill. You've also got additional documents. It could be something like a bank statement, but this is just to verify your identity. And then you've got your business address down here. Now, once you've uploaded all this, it's quite common for you to have to have an Amazon seller verification call. This is where you have a call with a team member at Amazon and they'll ask you to identify yourself. You'll have to show your passport next to your face and it's just to reduce fraud. Now, this can seem a little bit daunting when you're first starting, don't be scared. Um, we have done a whole video about what it does entail, so I will link it just up here. Um, so make sure to check that out. If you are at that stage, you won't have any problems. So please don't stress about that. But once you've got through the call and all your details are verified, you've then got your Amazon seller account set up and you can get selling. Now we're gonna try and find some products. So this is the fun bit. How on earth do we do this? So today I'm gonna to just giving you some tips and some pointers on a few methods you can use. When you are first starting out, it's really important not to get disheartened if you are struggling. Finding deals is hard, it is a skill, and as of anything, it takes time to learn, to master. The more time you spend doing it, the easier it does become. Because when you're first starting out, realistically, you have absolutely no idea where to look, what you should be looking for. So as long as you are persistent with it, it will become easier. Now, if you are using a deal finding platform, of course, that's going to save you time. Today, I'm going to be showing you a more manual method you can use using our deal of the day service. So if you've watched our deal of the day before, you'll probably know what it is, but it's where we're sending one to two deals Monday to Friday to all of our customers for free just to give them inspiration on what's out there, what they should be looking for, any sales on, any discounts running. And when you're first starting out, it can help show you the websites to be looking for. And this is the same with our deal finder as well. This is what a lot of people are using it for. It's about learning the types of products, about learning the websites out there, what sales are on at the moment. So here we are on our deal of the day. And as you can see, we just posted a few products in here. So we don't recommend to buy these deals just because they get seen by so many people, but you can use these to branch off and find other deals. So I'll show you a couple which we've sent in recently. So we've got this one here. It's an always fabulous foundation, which is eight pounds, but it's actually a discount code for six pound 40. On Amazon, we can see it sells for 13 pound 49. So that's always the first thing we're looking at is that buy it for a lot less than we're selling it. We can buy this one for six pound 40 on the website Natino, and Natino is a great website and we can sell it for 13 pound 49. We've got the same one here on Boots, which is two pound 33. And on Amazon, it's selling for eight pounds and five pence. Now, let's I wouldn't recommend to buy these deals, but look at both of them. So this one here basically says save a third on this brand. So we know that there's going to be other products like this, which are also going to be discounted. Same with Onatino. We know they've got discounts on at the moment with the code brand20 and it's saving 20%. And this is really important with arbitrage. If you can get discount codes, it often means you can be getting products for a lot cheaper than they're selling for on Amazon. And you can utilize these pricing differences to your advantage. We've found our products, but of course, of course, Amazon FBA is not as simple as just we can buy it for £6.40 and we can sell it for £13.49. There is more that goes in behind the scenes. So we're going to have to actually analyze this deal. So how on earth do we do that? So what we do is we'd load up the profitable Chrome extension. And this is what I talk about with the deal analyzer. This is to give you the important information on Amazon FBA. Of course, you don't have to use Profitool. We do have competitors, but I'll be showing you how it works on the Profitool extension today. So all we do is we'd open up the extension. There's a number of data points we want to be looking at. So the first thing we always check is we just come down here and we just check the brand matches on the product here. And the reason for this is because we don't want to get an IP risk. Sometimes what sellers do, which is very wrong, is they'll create a listing themselves under their own brand, which they own a trademark for, but there's actually a different branded product. And then when you sell on that listing, they'll, they'll report you to Amazon for selling their copy copyrighted products we always just check that it's not it's not someone doing something dodgy like that so we can see it is the same so that's absolutely great now next up we're checking the sales so this one's selling 31 to 59 a month so this is actually the listing sales and this is important because on an amazon product the reviews 
the sales rank, which is how popular a product is split between all of these variations. So it can make the product look more popular than it actually is. So on Profitable, we have our variation sales feature. So all you have to do is click this here and it's gonna tell us how much each of these variations are selling. So this one here we're looking at, we can see this is getting 14% of the sales of this listing. So five to nine a month, not loads to be honest. So this might put some people off. The most popular one is the 400 rows page that gets 46% of the sales. Now next up, we're gonna be looking at the product reviews. That's absolutely great, no issues there. It's obviously a popular line. Then we're looking at our return on investment and our profit. So 36% um, on this one, um, we have got 20 p per unit set into the postage section for into Amazon. Um, ideally, we want a minimum of 30%. Um, we can get a lot higher than this. It's quite feasible to do, but 30% is about our cutoff. We don't wanna be going much lower than that if we don't have to. Now, some people do, and it really is up, up to you to decide, but personally, we try to stay around um, 30%. So we've got 30% on this one, which is great. But the important thing is looking at, at what the price is now. Is it a high price? Is it a low price? So for this, we'd have a look at the pricing graphs just here. We'll do it over a longer time period just to see what's been going on. So we'll turn off FBM, we'll turn off use because that's not really our competition. So it looks like it's been a pretty stable price to be fair. The buy box price hasn't really been too much lower except for at one point for a couple of days here at seven pound, but this looks like it might have been an error. Um, has been fairly stable, so not too bad. And we can also notice that Amazon haven't been selling on this product, which is absolutely great. Ideally, we don't want to be competing with Amazon. There's a few other things we'd look at on here. So we'd look at the sales rank just to confirm it's selling. So the drops typically indicate sales. That's not exact science, but that's one way of that's one way of looking at it. So when you've got movement in a line, it means it is selling. But as we can see, this one it definitely isn't selling a huge amount. We'd also look at the number of sellers as well, just to see what it has been on average. And also if they've dropped off, this means they could have got an IP violation, uh, which is really bad on your account. But reading these graphs are really important. I obviously won't go into too much detail today. At the more time you spend using them, it, it becomes really clear on what you should be looking for. Now, next up, we're gonna be looking at our competition. So we can see we've got one other FBA seller on this listing. Uh, which is great, FBA is our main competition. However, um, the FBA seller doesn't have the buy box at the moment, it's actually an FBM seller, uh, but we'll also check their stock as well. So we can see they have about 44 in stock. So these probably are um, a wholesale seller, but we can see they're selling it a bit more, so 15 pounds. 31, hence why the FBM seller um, has the buy box. That would be okay for us. Obviously, the thing we have to consider is that it's only selling five to nine a month. They've got 44 in stock, so it's gonna take them quite a while to sell them. So are we gonna ever be able to jump on the buy box? And we have to reflect on all of these things to work out if it is worth going for. And then we'd have a quick look at any warning. So hazmat, not an issue, just means it could be in the dangerous goods program, no IP risk, um, six variations, which, which we've already talked about. The key of analyzing products is just look at as much data as possible to try and minimize your risk of bad buys. Sadly, no product is ever gonna be perfect, so please don't think it will be. It's just weighing up the different data points. So how many sellers you've got, how much stock do they have, what's the price graph saying? Is there any risk of an IP complaint? What is our profit? How much wiggle room? Now this product here, I would probably avoid. You could sell it, it definitely isn't bad. It's got a stable price. It's more just a lack of sales, which would probably put us off. But there are so many products out there just like this. And when sourcing products, if you find one, you can often umbrella, you can often find many more. And as I say, the more time you spend doing it, the easier it does become. So once you've found your first product, you've analyzed it, you've bought it, you're now ready to send it into Amazon. It's really easy to do. You go into your Amazon seller account, you add the product into your inventory, and then you create a shipment. Now I'm not gonna show you the steps of that stage just because it's a bit boring, really. It's obviously important, but we have done a couple of videos about it before, so I'll link them just up here. So if you do wanna see the steps, on sending your products in, make sure to check them out, but it's really easy to do and it's quite cheap as well. The partner shipping is UPS, so it doesn't eat into your profits too much at all. And then once you've done that, that is it. You've got to wait for your products to sell. You repeat it over and over. You reinvest your profits into more products, into more products, you can buy more quantity and you can really build up a, quite a large business without having to spend too much. That is the beauty of Amazon FBA. 
So much of it is hands off because Amazon take care of a lot of the back end logistics. Your main job is just finding the products and send them into Amazon's warehouse. So that's how you start Amazon FBA in 2023. Now, of course, Amazon FBA is a bit more complex than I have showed today. That is just a quick demonstration on the main things you wanna come across when starting your Amazon FBA journey. But we do hope that's given you a quick and easy understanding of the basics. Of course, if you have any questions about Amazon FBA, just let us know in the comments and we can get them answered for you. We do have a brand new course coming out on YouTube for free very soon. Keep an eye out for that. We have also done previous ones, but we've got a more detailed one. I'll link the previous one just up here. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one.